In April 1980, Fidel Castro said that any Cubans who wanted to leave the country could. Well, by the time he changed his mind in October 1980, over 125,000 Cubans did just that. They immigrated to the U.S. through Miami. Now, 50% of them permanently stayed in Miami, which increased the labor force by about 7%. So what was the effect of this massive immigration on the wages and unemployment rates of the people who already lived in Miami before the immigration? Well, that's exactly what David Card set out to do in this next study we'll look at. So here, I've got data split by whites and by blacks. So let's start with just the whites. I've got the unemployment rate in 1979, and in 1981, so before the immigration and after immigration. So for whites living in Miami, the unemployment rate was 5.1% before the immigration. After immigration, it was 3.9%. So it decreased by 1.2%. If we look at blacks living in Miami, it was 8.3% before immigration and 9.6% after immigration, 1.3. So an increase of 1.3. So if we just did a before and after comparison, these numbers would suggest that immigration lowered the unemployment rate for whites, but increased it for blacks. Now, as we've talked about before, that's not really the conclusion we can draw, because there might be other confounding variables that are changing over time that are actually driving these trends in unemployment rates for whites and blacks. So we can't really attribute this decrease and this increase solely to the change in immigration between 79 and 1981. What are we gonna do? Here's where we use the difference and differences idea. We make the common trends assumption and we extract out this common trend and then that's gonna leave us with the cause, an estimate of the causal effect of immigration on the unemployment rate. So where do we get the common trend from? Well, David Card is going to take four different comparison cities, Atlanta, LA, Tampa, St. Petersburg, and Houston. He's going to argue that these cities have very similar labor markets to Miami, and so they make a good comparison. So what was happening in these, in these cities? Well, before immigration, for whites, the unemployment was 4.4% for the comparison cities. Now, after Miami immigration, it was 4.3, so it decreased by 0.1. Now, remember, in the comparison cities, there wasn't any massive immigration between 79 and 81. Pretty much the immigration rate was the same. So the only thing that's changing over time in the control, uh, the comparison cities, is whatever the overall trend is. So here we see that the overall trend is going down by 0.1. But it, in Miami, it was going down by a lot more by 1.2. So our difference in difference estimate takes this common trend out of the trend in Miami, and we, we're left with a downward trend of 1.1%. So this is our difference in difference estimate of the causal effect of immigration on the unemployment rate for whites. It's 1.1% decrease. That suggests that immigration is lowering the unemployment rate, or increasing employment, increasing the percentage of people who have jobs. Let's do the same analysis for blacks. In the comparison cities, again, there wasn't any change in, in immigration between 79 and 81. But it, unemployment rate was still changing over time due to other factors. So in 79, it was 10.3%. And it increased to 12.6%. So there was a large increase in the unemployment rate for blacks in these comparison cities. Well, in Miami, there was also an increase in the unemployment rate from 8.3 to 9.6, but it didn't increase quite so much as how much it increased for the comparison cities. So what's the difference that it can explain this? Immigration. So the immigration is actually lowering the unemployment rate. So it's preventing the unemployment rate for blacks in Miami from going higher than it would have if immigration hadn't have happened, okay? which is exactly the case for the comparison cities. So our difference in difference estimate takes the trend for Miami, subtracts out the trend for the comparison cities, and we're left with minus 1.0%, a decrease in the unemployment rate of 1.0%. So 
for both whites and blacks, our conclusion from looking at these point estimates is that immigration is lowering the unemployment rate, or it's increasing employment, increasing the percentage of people who have jobs. So that's, one, that's the first main conclusion from this paper. Now, before we can go any, draw any other conclusions, we need to say, what about statistical inference? What about confidence intervals? Are these numbers statistically significant? Well, unfortunately, the answer is no. And we can see that by looking at these numbers here in parentheses. So here, this is the standard deviation for the difference in difference estimate. And it's 1.5. It's very large. So if we use this in our rule of thumb to construct a confidence interval, we take the standard deviation, multiply it by 2, and add and subtract that to our estimate. That gives us our confidence interval. If we do that, we're going to see that zero is in the interval, and the interval is really big. And the same thing is true for our estimate for blacks. So unfortunately, that means we really can't conclude anything about the causal effect of immigration on um, unemployment here. So although we might believe the causality uh, arguments, we believe the common trends assumption, we just, our statistical data just isn't enough to draw a really strong conclusion.